Hey guys, this is Tatolyong and this is gonna be a different video. I know there are no good beginner guys in the Dota 2 in-game client itself. So if anyone wants to try Dota, it's going to be very hard because there's just so much going on. In this video, I will tell you everything you need to know to get started in Dota 2. Whether you have tried other mobile games like League of Legends or have never played a single mobile game, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna try to keep this video as short as possible so I won't mention everything that is going on. But if any of my usual viewers think that I missed out something important, Important, leave it in the comments to help the newer players. Also, every time I say don't care, it means that you will probably learn it as you play the game more and I'm not gonna go too deep into it so that the video doesn't last for 2 million hours. I'm also going to be using League as a comparison because it is the closest game I can find but this is not going to be a League is better than Dota or Dota is better than League video. They are both very different games, this is not a hit video, this is the bare minimum you will need to start playing Dota. Okay, in Dota, every hero is uniquely overpowered in their own ways. When everyone is overpowered, no one is, and that's how the creator keeps the game balanced. Every single hero is free to play. There are no pre-game skills you need to select or emblems you need to level up. Every game is a new game, every hero can be countered by another hero, every combo can be countered by another combo, and the only thing that you can bring from your previous game is knowledge. This is a free game so nothing you buy can change the game, but it does make you feel good playing the hero. So what do I mean by overpowered? There are heroes that can prevent you from using items and spells. There are heroes that can stun your entire screen. There are plenty of global spells that allow you to kill heroes all over the map. There are heroes that stop time, heroes with 10 different abilities. This is an explosive game and there are a lot of fights, battle and war to be won. You will also see hero combinations that makes the game exciting to play like a wombo combo lineup or a everyone buff one call and dive the fountain lineup or a global kill you across the map lineup or even an and all in death push lineup. But before that, let's get started on the very basic. When you're selecting a hero, I would recommend choosing from the low complexity hero pool so you will get the feel of the game, then you slowly work your way up to the more complex hero. If you want to know more about these heroes, you don't have to queue into a game to test them, you can try them out in the demo mode. If you want to try on cosmetic items, you can do so here too. Unlike League of Legends, every hero can take on every role. There are no standard mid, AD carry or jungle role. Every hero can do anything. Of course, veteran players will tell you otherwise. They will say that there is a meta. This hero is better than that hero. This lineup is stronger than that lineup, blah blah blah. But when you're just starting out, you don't care. You just pick whatever hero from the low complexity hero pool and start the game. There is a drafting phase in Dora 2. Two players from both teams will pick their heroes. Then the other two players from both teams pick their heroes. Then the last pick. This drafting phase allows both teams to build their overall draft and counterpick your opponents. But that is good to know and you don't care. Just pick a hero, then the strategy phase. This is when both teams decide how they want to lane, where they want to ward, thinking of starting items, but you don't care as well. Just wait and load into the game. When you first load into the game, you will think that this game is laggy or why is my hero not moving instantly when I click it? This is the turn rate mechanic. When your hero is not facing the direction you want to move or cast a spell, there will be a slight delay because because your hero needs to turn. There are heroes that have no turn rate delays and there are heroes that have spells to slow your turn rate but you don't care as well and open your shop. Usually you plan your starting items during the strategy phase but for newer players I'll explain to you Dota 2 items here. Unlike League, you do not start building into one huge item straight from the start and you want to make use of all your item slots so that you are stronger than your opponent. Almost every item is usable meaning that you have to press and activate the different effects that the item provides you with. You will be given 6 items slots, 3 backpack slots, 1 neutral item slot, and 1 TP scroll slot. Item slots are for items that you buy and use. When you run out of slots, you place them in your backpack and switch it out when you want to use it. Of course, there will be a cooldown when you switch your item back. Jungle creeps will drop items after 7 minutes, so there is a slot for that. Your teleport scroll allows you to teleport back to base or any tower on the map and here's a slot for that. There are 2 shops in the game, one in your base and one outside of the base in the secret shop. There are strategies that prevent enemy from reaching the secret shop so they don't get to buy items but you don't care. For now, if you need an item there, you can walk there or buy it with your courier. Everyone is given a courier that delivers item to you. Your courier can be killed and will start flying when you hit level 4. As you level up, your courier will gain new abilities but you don't care. Just set a hotkey for your courier. There are strategies that specifically target your courier so you don't get any items but you don't care. Just remember to buy and deliver your items. Item builds in Dota are pretty complicated to explain. They are consumables. 
aura, defensive items, offensive items, stats items, and orb items. If you're playing a different role with the same hero, you might need to buy a different item. If you're playing against a certain heroes, you can buy certain items to counter the hero's ability, but for now, you don't care. Click on the shop, select a guide, and follow it. There are plenty of guides made by top tier players, and as you play the game, you will slowly learn the item's effect and the different item builds you can go for to help you win the game. The lanes and roles are pretty complicated to explain, so you don't care about any of them and I'll give you a standard way to start the game. Then as you play the game, you will learn the different laning combinations, hero win conditions and stuff. So right now, you're either a core or a support. There are 3 core roles, 2 support roles and 0 jungle role. Each core goes to each lane, top, mid and bottom. Both side lanes will have a support to follow them so the lane is going to look like a 2-1-2. Two, two. The first thing you want to do is to move out your base and plant the observer wards. You are given 2 observer wards in the start, they are free and they have a cooldown. These wards gives you vision of an area for a period of time. They are good warding techniques but you don't care for now, just plant it wherever you want throughout the whole game. Your first objective is going to be the bounty runes. Every 5 minutes starting from minute 0, the bounty runes will spawn on these 4 areas. If anyone on the team takes them, the whole team gains gold and it is pretty important to fight for it. Starting from 4 minutes, a power rune will spawn every 2 minutes either on the top or the bottom rune spawn. Keep in mind that the bounty rune spawn and the power rune spawn are different areas. These runes are like a special effect that the players get when they take it. They are important to the mid laner as it helps them win the lane or gang other the lanes, so you should fight for them too. There are 6 types of power runes, Arcane, Illusion, Invisible, Double Damage, Regen and Haste. Arcane rune reduces mana cost and cooldown. Haste gives the player max movement speed. Regeneration regen the player back to full health and mana. Invisibility, Double Damage and Illusion already explained for itself. So as you can see, these runes are all pretty overpowered. In Dota, every hero has a different animation. Some heroes hit faster, some heroes hit slower, some heroes have instant projectile, some heroes have a longer back swing. Every hero has a different damage. This animation and damage will affect your last hitting, so you should try your best to time your attacks just as the creep is about to die so you get the goal and experience. You can also prevent your opponents from getting the goal and experience by denying these creeps. Range creep will give more goal and experience, so higher level players will time their attacks and spells to together to secure every range creep in every wave, but you don't care about that, just try your best to last hit. Creeps can be blocked in Dota, and by doing so, you can control where you want your creeps to be positioned at the start of the laning phase, but you don't care. Vision, however, is not that complicated and is pretty easy to understand. There are day vision and night vision. You see more during the day and you see less during the night. Certain heroes see less during the day and see more during the night. Certain heroes reduce your vision, but you don't care. You will know it once you play against these heroes. Every tree is a fog of war. You are not invisible, you are just in the shadows. If the enemy have no ward and you hide behind a tree, the enemy can't see you. They are also high ground and low ground and they are pretty easy to recognize. It is always advantageous to be on the high ground because you have more vision and if someone were to attack you from the low ground, there is a 25% chance to miss. High ground are usually choke points as well, meaning that the terrain is narrow and it's easy to die if someone is camping on the high ground. There are also cliffs. Cliffs are terrain that you cannot get up there unless you use a certain spells or item to get up there. Most people place their observer walls on the cliff and you can do the same for now. Invisibility is a huge part of the game so it is important to know. There are spells, items and runes that can turn a hero invisible. You can only see invisible heroes when you have true sight. Tower gives you true sight. Sentry wards, dust, gem. Necrobook 3 gives you true sight. There are also spells that give you true sight, but just purchase a sentry or dust if you want to see invisible heroes. Sentry ward gives you true sight around the area, and since observer wards are invisible, you can deward enemy observer wards with sentry wards. Dust is just an item that you press and you reveal all invisible heroes around you. In League of Legends, the way you target spells are like skill shots. You aim at the Location, you predict your enemy's movement and you try to land a spell. Dota 2 have skill shot spells, but Dota also have point target, ground target, vector target, no target, channeling, toggle spells, and I'm not sure if I covered everything, so let me know in the comments if I missed out any. I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but you will understand once you start playing these heroes and trying out their spells. There are also different ways to skill different heroes depending on the situation of the game and the power spike of the hero, but you don't care, you just follow the guide made by other players. 
Aggro is when a creep or a tower attacks you. This is a little bit complicated so I'll give you what you need to know and you can figure out the rest yourself as you play the game. When you attack a hero under their own creep wave, the creeps will hit you due to aggro. When you attack an enemy hero under their tower, the tower will hit you and you might just die to the tower. You can transfer the aggro to your teammates or the creep wave by A clicking your teammates or creep wave under enemy tower as well. This will give you more time to kill a target under the tower. There are more advanced ways to use aggro but you don't care. Actually, if you do care about anything that I ask you to not care, you can check out my videos or any other videos on YouTube. Let's move on to damage. In Dota, there are physical damage, magical damage, pure damage, piercing damage, siege damage, spell damage, HP removal, instant kill, and I'm not sure if I missed out anything, so if anyone wanna elaborate further, you can leave it in the comments below. For now, let's focus on physical and magical damage. Physical damage gets mitigated by armor. Right clicks are physical damage and can be mitigated by armor and evasion. Evasion is when you miss an attack. Magic damage can be mitigated by magic resistance or spell immunity. Certain spells pierce a spell immunity but for now you just don't care. Just be aware of physical and magical damage, armor, magical resistance and evasion. Everything else don't care. Roshan is like the boss of the map. You kill him you get an Aegis. You kill him again he drops Aegis and cheese. You kill him more he drops Aegis, cheese, Aghanim shard and refresher shard but you don't care about any of those you just have to know that when you kill Roshan it drops an item that gives you an extra life. The goal of the game is to kill the tier 1 tower, tier 2 tower, tier 3 tower, break the wrecks and eventually win the game by taking down the ancient. Apart from towers that you want to push on the map, there are also outposts. Raiden and Dyer both starts with an outpost. You can capture the outpost once you break the tier 2 tower. It is like capture the flag or something. The more players click on it, the faster you capture it. The outpost will give the whole team experience every 10 minutes, so you want to capture it near every 10 minute mark. Just like a tower, you can also teleport to your outpost outpost and the outpost gives true sight as well. So here's the basic summary of the game. Of course, this is without any advanced strategy or hero combination. This is just the basic flow of the game. Game start, move out of base, plant ward, fight for bounty runes, go back to your lane, farm 4 minutes, support fight for power rune and reward the river, 5 minutes, fight for bounty rune, 6 minutes, fight for power rune, pressure the lanes and try to take a tower, hit level 6 for ultimate ability, take a team fight, take more towers, take outposts, take Roshan, go high ground and win the game. That should be everything you need to know to start playing Dota. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. If you think that you want to add more value to this video and teach newer players, you can leave it in the comments as well. If there's any changes to the game, I will probably make another video. Thank you for staying to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, do hit the like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification, and I'll see you in the next video.